13.07. Firing don't look as good as it used to, I don't think. So here's the campsite me and my mom stayed at last time we came up this way back in the winter. That was a nice little campsite. Plenty of wood for fire. You just have to haul water to get extinguish any kind of fire or whatever. Oh, that was probably around the 13.3 mile mark, that last campsite. Tell you what, it, I don't see too much matter if you're going down or up off the parkway. It's rough. And these rocks are just make your feet just so tired. And as you're constantly looking down. campsite 14.14 so we stopped for a small break by this campsite and delayed because we're not far from starting to climb maybe a half mile or so and I was starting to get hot while we we're dropping off the ridge so yeah it's like a good time to delay her and just Taking in some electrolytes. So. Oh, look at the ferns. So currently we are seven over seven miles from Butter Gap. So I think we're just gonna try to push it and not take a break at deep 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 gap. Um shall Sally, come here baby. Come here, I'll show. Hey have fun. They make it look so easy. So anyway, so yeah, I think I'll just, I might, if I walk past the shelter and it's not far off the, or it's not far off the trail, I'll film the shelter because I haven't seen the new Deep Gap shelter yet. Um, but honestly, I may just skip it. Um, I think I'm out doing another, just like a regular backpacking trip on the Art Lobe with some friends, so. I can film it then, probably. I mean, we're not doing, right now, I don't feel like we're doing too bad on time. Like 14, or 14.3 miles, and it's right at 12.01. So yeah, just, just trying to keep all forward momentum. Um, seems like the, this last time I stopped, like it just like, oh, just all the joints in my, in my muscles are that's mainly my back. I don't know if I twisted wrong or what, but it's been hurting nonstop for like the last six miles, which is annoying. But it could be worse. It could be my knee or something more critical. So I'll take it. Um, but anyway, that's, so I feel like 
we're doing better on time now that we're kind of back in the woods and not dawdling so much. Um, I still don't want to just take it easy just in case like we need that extra time later in the day. So uh, yeah, but I mean overall I still feel good. Um, of course I am pretty well used to like 10 to 20 mile days but like I think I want to hit a wall probably around mile 21 <laughs> or 22 and that'd be like leaving Butter Gap shoulder but I feel like I'm gonna have to eat something and take a good stretch break before continuing on um, from there because we'll have from Butter Gap I think we'll have one more climb maybe two um, but nothing like what we've been doing so once we get these next two mountains out of the way sassafras and pilot we should be good to go other than um whatever the mountain is between butter gap and um pilot so uh, so i wonder how we can do is take it one step at a time but so far so good um you know i feel good like i feel like i brought enough food I may have brought too much food, honestly. Um, but I didn't know what I would feel like eating because I tried eating my pretzel bites and they were good, but it just, it wasn't as, I guess, uh, pleasing to the palate as the pineapple and mango. So, um, yeah, I just, and of course I always enjoy my, you know, pro bar gummies and the, honey stingers and stuff the, the, the gummies not the waffles but yeah just, just making it work wishing I could run like some of these people but I just ain't a runner that ain't in my DNA this is really pretty I like all the green and the sections of ferns and they got that grass right there it's really pretty oh right here Oh, it is pretty. Now, I think we're pretty close to Farlow at this point, so. Right, this is Farlow Gap. We're 0. 0.65 from Sassafras Knob, 417 feet. So this is at 14.49, Farlow Gap comes up that way. And we go straight up. So, that way is Deep Gap Road. That's how me and my mom went down to avoid going up and over these two summits. That's a really nice walk actually, I would, I'd recommend it. Okay. Now I start climbing. So, you know, the trail junction is right down there, so we came up this way. There's actually a nice campsite right there. 14.51. All this grass is so pretty. There's another little site campsite there. Uh, 14.58. Nice little fire ring there. So this is that deep gap road. It goes that way. Hot load stays straight. 14.65.
15 miles halfway allegedly I guess this is the summit of Sassafras. This just looks like a cool summit tree. <laughs> so this cool tree is at 15.05 or 5,000 feet elevation gain even. <laughs> This feels like a summit somewhere. Where's the summit? Okay, so apparently we are at the summit of Sassafras. I don't see a marker or anything, but my watch just told me that we were on it. So, no, maybe not. Okay, well, then we'll keep walking. <laughs> like we got a choice. It's funny. Okay. Now it feels like we're dropping. So, I'm assuming. Hmm. I don't know. Yep, we passed it. So, somewhere along this ridge, <laughs> the top of this ridge is the summit of Sassafras. I don't know. I didn't see any kind of marker or like stones or anything stacked, like signifying that it was back there. But <sighs> one mountain down, one, another one to go. We got Pilot next, but we dropped down to Deep Gap Shelter. So, for now, we'll just enjoy a nice downhill. <laughs> give our legs a little bit of a break all right so his summit of pilot is at just under a mile 522 feet of elevation gain so it's a little bit taller than sassafras i think what we just climbed is i think 478 and then after that we should have a pretty significant downhill to Gloucester, Gloucester Gap, and then we have that climb that we did like a week or two ago. So, um, when we were in Pisgah, it was a nice campsite. It's at uh, 15.5 miles halfway. Sally obviously thinks, hey, huh, let's stay here. And that is one thing I'll note. Um, I did change what kind of what I brought for like an emergency. Um, I brought my down quilt. Um, that way, just in case I do feel like I need to stop short and stay at better gap. You know, all I brought was my pad and my quilt. So, um, I was initially just gonna bring like a liner and emergency blanket just to keep it light, but it weighed more than my quilt did. So, um, and yeah, so that's that's the one change I did make to my bag yesterday before I left. So hopefully I won't need it, but it's nice to know I've got it. <laughs> Oh, there's the shelter. Shoot. 
So it's very similar to Butter Gap. So I won't walk down there to, since there's people. Um, maybe the trail goes by it. I'm not really sure. And this is a 15.4. This is point I'll show her. 15.41. Y'all have a good ride. That's cool. Definitely a lot better than the old shelter. Alright. Keep going south. And I will know, I didn't go um, out to the water source, but from what I remember, like where we came down beside um, the shelter, it was to, it would have been to my left as I was coming up beside of it. Um, that's where it was before, but I don't know if it's, you know, rerouted or anything since they did that construction and stuff, so. because I think that was probably one of the better water sources for this section. And that, that would have been like the first one we've seen since before, like near Shining Rock Gap, basically. So. Now I definitely recommend if you can just carry the water because water up here is not guaranteed. There's some water. Is that any water? Alright, we got 0.65, 522 feet. Summit pallet. So here's Deep Gap Road. It's a lot drier than when me and Mom is up here. So here's where the art load splits once again from Deep Gap. So it goes that way. You got a few campsites. You got one there, this area here. And then there's one over here that just looked amazing when we were up here back in, I think it was February. Climb pallet. Hmm. One step at a time. That's my motto for this trip. One step at a time. But this junction is at 15.6. Alright, let's do it. Our metal pipe. Take another little small break here on this climb. Come on, lead the way. Just to hydrate. I was, I just was sweating and I was just really, really hot. So, um, 
I got finished my electrolyte, the element stuff, and I took two salt tabs, um, watermelon flavor. Um, let those kind of, I partially let them dissolve and then partially chew them. So, uh, yeah. This is to finish this. Three, 390 feet. Nice than a half mile. Oh man. That race feels good. I guess I could be a small campsite right there. Sixteen point oh seven. Dog treat. Um, she can try it. <laughs> Sometimes she's picky, so. Well, our, do my dog our dog picky, is very picky. Oh, uh, really? Oh, you're so. Oh, you like that piece? It's the same biscuit, so the first one <laughs> you can eat too. <laughs> hey, hey. Hey, hey. Uh, uh, so, oh, stay. Uh -huh. It's okay. It's okay. Can you see her well? Sit. Sit. All right, I'm at top of pilot, 16.14. Great view, but we gotta keep going. Yeah, you shake it off. All right, let's get down. I couldn't really enjoy the view, but I didn't want to crowd them, and honestly, we just need to go at this point. A small campsite probably set up 16.15. Right, so I think our next target is probably Butter Gap or the mountain before Butter Gap. Um, I mean, the girls took a break last, the last Pisgah trip. So I'll show y'all the way. By now we're at 16.17. Looks like they had a fire lately. I can't remember this being burned last time. Yeah, so I just checked. We got four miles to Chestnut Mountain, which is like a mile and a half or so. I can't remember how far that is from Butter Gap. I didn't feel like it was far, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, but right now it's 151. I figure we might make it a better gap by four. Hopefully. That's that's initially three was my goal, but uh, if we if we can make it before five, I think I would be happy. Honestly. Um, so we'll just see. We'll see what kind of time we can make coming down uh, descending pilot. But thank you to the group that gave Sally a biscuit and the guys up at the top giving her carrots and stuff. She is a spoiled dog. <laughs> I just do not remember this being burnt last time, last, when I came up last. Of course, I mean, that's been a while ago, so. <clears throat> but I'm pretty sure from here 
all the way to Gloucester Gap. Um, it's downhill, so that's nice, honestly. It's kind of over uphill at this point. So far today, we gained 5,500 over 5,500 feet elevation gain. The legs are starting to feel a little tired and we've got a long way to go. But I think too, it could just be my mid-afternoon slump kind of thing too. So, um, gotta keep going. I don't show any of these other trails being here. Hmm. I'm assuming we go straight. Even on all trails, it doesn't show anything. Oh, that's a campsite. Uh, this is at 16.55. Oh, I'm eating kind of my dinner. It's a uh, walking tamale, bean salsa berry. Pretty good. A little tent stop. 16.73. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the tiniest fire ring. So the tamale was good, so I'm ha now I'm having some uh, pork barbecue jerky and some, I'm giving Sally the salmon pieces. There are some of the pork too. So at oh, uh, sixteen point nine eight, it looks like not being a view, so we're going to check it out. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm definitely going all the way out here.
You're blocking my exit. A really nice view. I'm back on the trail, 16.99. I think that right over there through the trees might be cedar rock. That's the big rock you see that's closest to Butter Gap Shelter. We're headed that way. I guess this could be a campsite if you were desperate. Set up like right here. Uh, this is at 17.26. <clears throat> right here's a nice campsite. Right on this little ridge. 17.31. It's like you could hang hammocks or tents here. I mean, you know, either set up. Yeah, flame azalea here is really pretty. Looks nice, nice and shaded. Got a nice breeze here too. Alright, here's Pilot Mountain Road. Um, and the Art Lobe. This is at 17.47. Crossing over Pilot Mountain Road again. This is at A nice little overlook there. There's like a cliff to your right there. But I'm not going to go out there today. Tired. Now we gotta climb. Before I make per a, the seat a permanent thing, we'll get up and keep moving. So this is Gloucester, Gloucester, something gap. I don't know how you say it. It's G L O U C S T R. I think. <sighs> so anyway. Four stars, 475, 471, and 229. They all just kind of converge here. The art load goes up. <sighs> I'm starting to feel tired. I got at least 12 miles to go. 
Less sitting or walking. So that goes out to Brushy Mountain. And it look like, uh, according to Gaia, there's a campsite right here on this ridge. So it might be something to consider if you're looking for a good campsite, maybe. Might be worth going to check out. Okay, so we're facing across Kathy's Creek Road, Forest Service 471. So we are at 18.63. There's like a little campsite, 18.67. Right. Took my pack off for a minute. Got me some, another pack of energy chews. Get me, get me up his next bigger, bigger climb. You can see, next climb is, uh, Chestnut Mountain, 453 feet. There's campsite on top of Chestnut Mountain, 20.13. Sally's so he's trying to make her a bed. She's trying to put digging up dirt, making a mess. Whew. But I crossed 20 miles. 
coming up that last climb. <sighs> Overall, I'm still feeling pretty good. Um, feels like everything's kind of tightening up, so the last 10 miles are going to be feeling everything. But, I mean, otherwise I feel good. I, you know, I don't feel completely drained. So, that's nice. <laughs> See, there's another local campsite here, but there's no firing. So, now we'll make our way to Butter Gap. Because I'm out of electrolytes and I'm out of, at least my water electrolytes. Um, and I think I want to top off my hydration bladder. Kind of feels like it's running kind of low. Might double, double check it just to see what it's at. But um, and just maybe eat one more snack and just push our way to the car. Whew. And the pack has done great. Like, I don't have any complaints about the pack so much. Other than I just can't figure out how to use the bottom pockets, but it's probably user error, not the design. <laughs> but anyway. We'll just keep trucking along. Do one thing. I'm glad that sun went behind a cloud and there's a breeze coming up at the last two climbs. Kind of made the temperature a little bit more tolerable. Felt a little cooler and stuff. So. Anyway, here's one last campsite up here on top of Chestnut Mountain. No firing, but I see you anyway. Now we start descending 20.23 and to this point we gained 6,444 feet. Elevation loss has been 5,978. We've been at this 15 and a quarter hours. So allegedly we're 1.34 to better gab. So but for the most part, I think that's downhill. I think there's one, yeah. One one little climb. But I think that may be after better gap. Oh just take it. One step at a time. And the last couple of climbs, I broke these out. Margarita blocks. There's something over there in the woods, I hear it. Walking and running, one. I don't see anything. But... That's the new, that's the Butter Yacht Trail. And we go straight to make another climb. And this is at 
don't show my new butter yet. So we we'll take a right. This is at 21.41. Then come down here and stay on the art lobe. At least we're through the most difficult and it's now just difficult. Another gap shelter. There's a ton of people I won't film, but it'll probably be around the 21.53 mile mark. Y'all have a good night. Sally, I'll try. Alright, so there's the shelter. 21.55. Um, the water and the pipe was kind of barely flowing, so I think I'm just going to wait and get it at the next really nice flow spot. Because I feel like I got enough water, so it's not a big deal. But anyway start our next climb. No. Bullet tissue right in the trail. Nice. I'm not touching that. I'm sorry. I don't think I'm gonna get water here either because, like, I know there's a ton of like, like number two kind of like toilet stuff up there. So I don't really want crap water. So we'll just keep going. Make this climb up Cedar Rocks. I think. The source me and Tara used was on up, so I think that's the one me and Caitlin used too. So <sighs> I'm tired. Twenty-one point six one. We're going. Let's go. Just like I don't wanna. I remember this being mostly like gradual. So maybe this this won't be too too awful. So let's see our next point is Chestnut Knob, three miles, twelve hundred feet. Oh god. I knew it looked bad on the map what we're approaching. <sighs> 6,617 feet so far. And once we go over Chestnut Knob, that should be the last major climb of the day. So, and that will leave us, I think, five miles something like that to the car so we'll just see see how it all goes I too it just depends on if we decide to stop or if we just just keep going this is a watch though That's all good. Mm. This water is at 21.69.
There's a water source here, but I don't know how you get water from it. 22 miles. Right. So according to Gaia, um, there's a couple of smaller climbs down the similar to what we're doing right now. Um, past Chestnut and Knob. Um, so but for the most part, he'll be downhill after that. So we got two and a half miles of climbing left. Um, significant climbing. It's like uh, 12 or 1300 feet, I think. So, uh, yeah. Just, just ready for downhill, so honestly. Start, starting to feel it. Still enjoying it. I'm glad I'm glad I've tried it. I don't think I'll be doing it again. Cause I'll be honest, this is probably my limit for a day. And I don't even think I would wanna <laughs> do it. You know. I think I think about my max per day comfortably is like 18. But anyway. I'll just keep showing you all the way. Um, 22.49. Pretty tight. You probably hang a hammock, I guess, between these two trees. So here's a water source, um, 22.59. So I'm gonna stop and just grab enough to fill up my electrolyte bottle and not worry about my hydration bladder. As at this point, the less weight on my shoulders, the better. So we filtered enough for my electrolyte bottle. Have like an energy mix. Um, like yuzu pineapple or something with what I've eaten. So um, try to sip on that and then I've got apple. So that's going to be my dinner. Healthy, ain't it? On that water source, it's probably like 22 point six four or six five. Oh, plus I had a nut and seed bar too bar as well while I was down there. Ow. There's a nice flowing source at 22.77.
Yes, this could be a camp spot, maybe. 22.9. There's your campsite. 22.9, Short downhill, then another short uphill, then a big uphill. Oh man. I'm really starting to feel it. I mean, I mean, I feel okay, but it's just I am taking every opportunity to sit right now and just rest, take the pressure off my back. Um, I'm still enjoying it, but it's just, I've entered the, I'm ready for the car phase. So, gotta keep going though. That's dry. That's right at So I think this may be the trail that goes to the summit of Cedar Rock Mountain. And across from that is a little, little campsite. I'll take that back. I didn't even, I didn't even see this trail. Eh, whatever. That climb is gonna be awful. Anyway, that campsite right there is at 23.16. Right, and there's another little small campsite, uh, 23.2. So it'd be good for like a tent, maybe. I really don't see a place to hang a hammock there. These last couple of climbs have been butt kickers. It's like, oh, you don't have anything left? Well, here, here's a couple more climbs. Okay, I think this is the side trail to Cedar Rock, maybe? It's the only one I've ever seen as I'm going down through here. I've never seen that one in the middle. Let's see, yeah. All right. Yeah, a little down and then up to chestnut. Okay, so this junction is up. Twenty three point three three. One point three nine miles. Five hundred and sixty eight feet to chestnut knob. funny I think along this section is where I first had the thought to do this crazy thing I thought later in one day back last November honestly it seemed like a far-fetched dream um, I mean I never thought I'd be able to hike 30 miles in a day but what a shot right? so I mean, it's definitely hard. I mean, I, uh, I mean, I don't think I would do it again. 
um, not as a one day hike but it's fun just to do the challenge and of course we ain't done yet but just to do it but do I recommend it? no but if you're going for punishment by all means This is over the trail at, oh, um, 23.49. That is going to be one steep freaking climb. This intersection's at 23.92. Uh, okay, art load trial. So this junction's at 23.93. All right, so now we start the final climb up Chestnut Knob. It's 0.8 to the top, 486 feet. You're making it, Sally. You're making it. Hey, well, what are you doing? We gotta go. I don't wanna lay it down too, Sally. Five eight left, to run a seventy two feet to the top of chestnut knob. Hey, what I like this end of the trail better. It's just leaves and nice tread, not a rock wheel. Of course, I'll say that and I'll jinx myself. Here's a nice little campsite, no firing. Looks like there might have been one at one time. Twenty-four point seven one. Alright, I think that's the summit. Almost. No little campsite fire ring though. Twenty four point seven three and I believe this is the summit of Chestnut Knob as well. I don't know, it says point oh two, but I mean the trail starts dropping right here, so well, it's like it's been, it maybe a firing here, but ten space. It looks nice. 
right. I think that does it for chestnut knobs. So to this point, we've gained 7,999 feet, lost 7,359, 24.73 miles. And we have 5.58 miles to go to get to the car. It's all downhill. Praise the Lord for that. It's 8 o'clock, so maybe, maybe we won't get off trail too late. Maybe like 9.30 instead of 10.30. Because I'll be honest, we did that climb faster than I thought we would. Maybe that energy liquid IV really helped me. <laughs> Plus too, I think it cooled down. The sun's not out, so it's just cooler. Actually, which makes it a little bit easier. But we'll keep showing you all the way. Like I said, I think it's about five. Yep, five point five six to the car. I'm gonna stop and put my um, rain jacket on just as like a wind barrier. Yes, I just got my rain jacket on just as a wind break to keep myself from getting too cold. Um, yeah, so, man, I'm just gonna go ahead and close it out now while y'all can still see my face. Um, but, I mean, I, like I said earlier in the video, I wouldn't recommend doing this unless you just want a challenge unless you're just glutton for punishment want to see what you can do but don't hit this unprepared like bring you know i mean it is you know high elevation north carolina mountains so weather can vary greatly um so be prepared for that um bring lots of food because you're burning a ton of calories um of course I, on in all honesty i don't think i ate enough, near enough but um i just couldn't make myself eat and i mean i can eat on the go but i just i need to figure out my system for like grabbing while moving because i can't reach back and get the food out of the side pocket they don't fit in the front pocket, so that just kind of really limits where I can put food. Um, and I don't really trust that bottom pocket, so. Um, but as for the trail itself, it's hard. As hard as a backpack, even if you do it as a two night, three night trip. And it just, it's, a, it's an absolute butt kicker. Um, so to do it in one day, it's, it's tough like i'm really starting to feel it especially in my shoulders i think i've just got too much weight in this pack i don't know what the comfort like you know the load recommended load is for this pack but i don't think it was 18 pounds um so that would be something to consider is just know your pack um, the reason i love this pack is just the front pockets for my gopro and the phone um, and really, I mean, like I can reach back and get my electrolyte bottle. It's just accessing food, which is probably more critical, but, um, uh, I mean, you could go northbound, but that would be absolutely brutal in one day. Um, I, I think even what we did going Sobo was hard, um, because you do have slightly more elevation gain going northbound. Um, I mean, you know, I guess I, my top tip would just be, you know, know your speed and just know you're probably not going to go as fast here as you do like other trails unless you just, you hike this area all the time. Um, I mean, I knew I would be slow at this, but I still wanted to try it. I, I don't know why, but um, grateful, grateful I've done done as much as I've done today. Um, 
Lord will let me make it all the way to the car. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's dog friendly. I mean, Sally's still wanting to chase squirrels and stuff, so I think I don't think it wore her out much. So, um, I, mean, I think it did wear out, but her prey drive for squirrels outweighs any tiredness she might be feeling. Um, yeah, and I mean, know that water sources are scarce. Be prepared to carry water, because, um, yeah. It's just, it's just scarce. That's, that's all there is to it. Um, so I think that's, that's all I can think of to say about it. It's just tough. Know what you're getting in for. If you attempt it, I don't recommend it. Just because I'm doing it don't mean, you know, you should. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I can't say why exactly I wanted to do it. I just did. And it just would not go away. So I had, it was just an itch I had to scratch. Um, you know, whether I failed or succeeded, I at least wanted to try. So, having said all that, I'm gonna keep going down the trail here. It's starting to get darker, so probably have to break out the headlamp here in a little bit and my lantern which I charged that, you know, during the day. Um, so, and also that's something to keep in mind too, is if you do start early, um, especially from the northern end, you know, at Deep Gap, there's campsites and stuff. So just be aware, you know, that you're probably gonna be passing through somebody's camp, you know, try to be mindful about that. Um, Anyway, I mean, I've enjoyed it, but it's just, right now, it's just get to the car mode right now, like, but I am enjoying the downhill, which is nice. Now, I will say, this bottom, probably third of the trail is really nice, like, it's not rocky or anything. I mean, it's just, it's, it's just nice. It's very nice walking. And this is a really nice section of trail. I kind of want to keep saying that, but I really enjoyed this. Maybe it's just because it's downhill. It's just kind of pretty with like the thickets and just everything. Alright, so more difficult. 475, no, 475C is this road. It just kind of zigzags here at 25.68. It's a pretty road. I don't say what this section is going to be like. It's most difficult, more difficult, moderate. turns left here. Let's see. It's a nice campfire. Campfire. Camping area here at 26.19. I'm just trying to figure out where the crap the trail goes. I'm assuming it's over there. Because that's the only trail I see. So Twenty six point two. I think technically it's one point one nine, but let's see. 
more slight connector. Then we're going to hang a wrap. It's out. That ain't the trail, baby. 26.32. It's about 3.4 from the end. Put a nice little uphill. It's like a quarter mile long. It is just the gift that keeps on giving. I swear. So here's a campsite, it looks like. 27.22. I hope that's the end of the climbs. But I know it ain't. Because there's a little one right it's looks like near the end. I have to ride downhill for a couple of miles just to oh, recover. So here's a campsite at 27.31. See a fire ring. So at twenty-seven point four three there is a trail blockage. Trying to tell figure out if people are going around. I think they're going around it, so we'll try to do that. Go this way. Looks like maybe what people are doing. No, 925 right now. So that I'm getting off the toilet ten. That last friggin' hill, man. You don't ever have those miles that it just seems like you walk and walk and walk and the miles just ain't. <laughs> so yeah, it's like we got twenty seven and a half right now. 
And then we got 2.85. Oh. Well, I didn't get it on film because I was too busy holding Sally, but uh, I just had my first, uh, uh, a first on the trail, a goat. I was like, I guess the couple, and they had a dog. I thought they said they had a dog because they were asking if I, you know, had a dog. I don't know what they said, but I was like, oh, I'll just go off trail and let y'all buy. They had a goat. I was like, that's a first. I don't think I've ever seen a goat on the trail. I mean, I've heard of it, but I actually see it. It's interesting. But, God. They're trying to get to Butter Gap tonight. And it's like 9.39. That makes me tired. Whew. I wish them luck. I'm glad I'm feeling great for well, me. In the next two and a half miles will be long enough. Oh, it's up here. That's all I go. I'm just going to follow the art lobe. Wait. Uh, Most difficult. So then we're going this way. And that don't look like the trail. So this is at 27.87. Alright, so I double checked and this is the trail. Hi. What's you doing? That's like 27.87. Oh, so we've got 2.48 miles to go. There's the elevation profile. I don't know if y'all can see that. Point one five miles. Two hundred and fifteen foot ascent between me and the car. That's one more climb. Right. I think there's a campsite at 28.9291. Nine, I couldn't tell, but it looked like somebody was in it, so. Yeah. 
I hope that's it. I hope that's all the appeal. I don't have any more to give. Assuming that's the city lights of Brevard. So I think at 28.99 we finally are going downhill. No more uphill I don't think. like that is just here's the Pisgah information See the bridge. Great the difficult. Oh my gosh. The first. She's like, you know, I do, but I can't hasten my step anymore. Everything hurts, hips hurt, knees hurt, shins hurt. Pretty sure anything related to the legs and lower body is gone. No, come on. But it was worth doing. I can't believe we did it. This is like the path that doesn't end.
I think I see lights or something. Maybe from the parking area. And that's it. We've done it. Uh, it took us uh, 21 hours and 45 minutes. And I've been awake for more than 24 hours straight. I, I don't have words. Just... Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.